What happened on January 6th is that Donald Trump supporters showed up because he told them to. They marched to the Capitol because he told them to. They attacked the Capitol because he told them to stop the steal. That is the truth, and that is how history is going to record it. Thank you for prosecuting those who attacked our nation's capital. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The House Judiciary Committee has the responsibility of helping to ensure the rule of law. Unfortunately, this committee's chairman ignored a bipartisan congressional subpoena. The horrible precedent set by this chairman has damaged the credibility of all congressional committees in seeking information from witnesses and damaged the rule of law. Attorney General Garland, thank you for your public service and thank you for being here today. I'd like to start by showing a video of January 6th and then I'm going to ask you some questions about that day. Hey, brother, we're boots on the ground here. We're moving on to Capitol now. I'll give you a boots on the ground update here in a few. Multiple Capitol entries. Multiple Capitol entries. <laughs> Attorney General Garland, the Department of Justice charged over 1,100 defendants in connection with the attack on our Capitol, correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm going to state two facts. The people who showed up on January 6th to attack the nation's Capitol were supporters of Donald Trump. They attacked the Capitol to stop Congress from certifying the fact that Donald Trump lost the election. Those two facts were so horrible that some in the right-wing media and some Republican members of Congress could not handle that, so they made up conspiracy theories. In fact, Donald Trump called January 6th a beautiful day. He said the people who showed up had love in their hearts. The Republican member of Congress said January 6th was like a normal tourist visit, and some Republicans have said there were no weapons used on January 6th. Attorney General Garland, were there weapons used in the attack on January 6th? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, in the video you already saw the, uh, some of the weapons that were used, and there, there are obviously many more, many, many hours of video. Another conspiracy theory is that somehow the FBI actually orchestrated this attack. So I'm going to go through some cases that have gone through completion and resulted in sentencing. Joe Biggs was sentenced to 17 years in prison for seditious conspiracy and other counts related to attack on our nation's capital. Have you seen any shred of evidence that Joe Biggs was an FBI agent? No. In fact, Joe Biggs was a member of the Proud Boys. This is what Assistant U.S. Attorney Connor Monroe stated about Joe Biggs and the Proud Boys in court. He stated, quote, they saw themselves as Donald Trump's army fighting to keep their preferred leader in power no matter what the law or the courts had to say about it. And on, Jan on September 4th, Joe Biggs stated that he is confident Trump will pardon him. He said, quote, oh, I know he'll pardon us. We're his supporters. We went there like he asked. I'd like to now ask you about the case of Stuart Rhodes, who was sentenced to 18 years in prison for the attack on our nation's capital. Have you seen any shred of evidence that Stuart Rhodes was an FBI agent? No. In fact, he was the founder of the Oath Keepers, a far-right paramilitary organization. Rhodes asked Donald Trump to call them up as militia. And then I'd like to ask you about Enrique Torrio, who was sentenced to 22 years in the attack on our nation's capital. Have you seen any evidence that Enrique Torrio was an FBI agent? He was not an FBI agent. In fact, he was the leader of the Proud Boys. What happened on January 6th is that Donald Trump's supporters 
showed up because he told them to. They marched to the Capitol because he told them to. They attacked the Capitol because he told them to stop the steal. That is the truth, and that is how history is going to record it. Thank you for prosecuting those who attacked our nation's capital. I yield back.